This time it's five more classic British 250cc motorcycles. The advent of the 250 linear law in the 1960s saw the introduction of a plethora of 250cc four-stroke and two-stroke machines for the British industry. So here are five more classic British 250s. Greaves. Greaves, of course, is a British company best known for its off-road exploits. Its frame used a very unusual cast aluminium front spar, and sometimes very unusual suspension systems on the front too. And this slightly unusual appearance has left some people who are slightly less learned than myself to list these bikes as some of the worst ever produced. This is absolute nonsense. Greaves were some of the best off-roaders of their day, and made some cracking on-road bikes too. In the early and mid-60s, they developed their own competition engine, the Challenger. But they also made extensive use of Villiers single and twin cylinder engines too in their machines, often with slightly different states of tune than the more home drum bikes out on the road at the time. The original company was established by Burt Greaves in 1952. Burt Greaves' cousin, Derry Preston Cobb, had been disabled, so the main focus of the company had been the production of invalid carriages, with Derry acting as a salesman. But the company soon moved on to motorcycle production, particularly in the off-road genres, trials and motocross being their main areas of concern. But by the 1960s, they offered a range of on-road bikes too. Some of these machines were developed for the international six-day trials, so were essentially off-road bikes with a light set often using the Challenger engine or variants of it. But others were essentially road machines such as the Essex and the Sports Twin, both of which used variants of Villiers 2T and later 4T parallel twin power units. The 2T was available of course as a 250 but also as a 328. Compared to modern engines it was very smooth running and produced really good low down torque compared to later two strokes, although top end power was rather modest. The Sports Twin had the more conventional look having the more curvy classical styling. The Essex model had more angular styling and looked much more up to date in many ways. Both machines would make use of Greaves' unusual leading length front forks with conventional rear suspension. 1964 would see a switch to the Villiers 4T engine. With its revised porting the 4T did produce more power at the top end and the machines were generally capable of over 70 miles an hour. But the 4T sacrificed some of the smoothness and flexibility of the earlier 2T engine. But by the end of the 60s both machines were gone when Villiers ceased engine production. But the company would survive producing competition machines based on their own engine and also imported Pook engines thereafter. The Norton Jubilee Norton's Jubilee is one of those great frustrating what-ifs of the British industry. It had all the right ingredients. Designed by Norton, by engineer Bert Hopwood, the little bike shed its big end bearings with a much larger Norton Dominator range, so it should have been very tough indeed. It was also Norton's first unit construction engine. The little machine got its slightly unusual name because in 1958 on launch, Norton was celebrating their Diamond Jubilee. The machine used an overhead valve parallel to an engine with a 60 by 44 bore and stroke dimensions making it obviously over square. It made just 16 horsepower at 7750 rpm and the engine did have to be revved to really get it moving. But if you did work the engine you would be rewarded with a 75 mile an hour plus top speed. Early on the machine gave a reputation for oil leaks and poor reliability. Hopwood redesigned the crankshaft and beefed up the gearbox lay shaft bush. After that point the Jubilee's reputation much improved and sales did slowly begin to rise. The sales never really reached the peak that Norton had hoped for. Now this was largely because the machine, although expensive, had made a lot of use of Francis Barnett parts for the frame and running gear and the gearbox came from AMC's Piatti designed two-stroke engines. The first model sold was the Deluxe. This came with the own very trendy fully enclosed bodywork. From 61 however a more conventional naked version would be offered for sale. The model would continue in the range until 1966, because it was at this point that Norton's Bracebridge Street factory was closed down and all production was moved to the AMC plant at Woolwich. The Jubilee was never successful as Norton had hoped, only around 5,000 models being sold, 
But at Woodsbourne, the much nicer, more powerful 350 Navigator and the Electra 400, this featured indicators and an electric start. So the Jubilee, if not Britain's best 250, certainly Britain's best sounding 250. Francis Barnett and James. After World War II, both Francis Barnett and James had been brought into the AMC empire. So both produced a complementary and pretty much identical range of machines, with fairly small differences, really just a matter of badge engineering. As the 60s dawned, AMC had turned their back on Villiers, their traditional engine supplier for Francis Barnett, and instead decided to build their own engines. They bought an Italian engineer, Piatti, to design the machines for them. But for a number of reasons, these bikes were not successful. The Piatti engine was not properly developed, largely as the result of AMC penny pinching, but also the Woolwich factory had no experience assembling two strokes, so build quality was very poor, and reliability, of course, suffered, damaging the reputations of both James and Francis Barnett. And of course, Villiers was severely affected by the loss of its two main customers. Somewhat embarrassing for AMC, the build quality issues would not be fixed until the engines would be sent over to Villiers for final assembly. A 249 version of the engine was developed for use in machines such as the Cruiser 84, as well as some off-road machines, but the poor performance and poor reputation of the engine meant that sales were poor, and by the mid-60s, Villiers engines had returned on many Francis Barnett and indeed James machines. And indeed, machines equipped with the 2T engine would be given a more sporty look to try and attract younger riders to the fold. But sales were quite modest, and in 1966, the collapse of the AMC group would bring an end to both James and Francis Barnett simultaneously. Both James and AMC two-strokes remain popular small classics today, and whether they're equipped with a 4T unit or the 2T parallel twin, they can be very usable and fun little bikes. Even the Piatti engine machines can be a good bargain. They still remain fairly unpopular, but with modern two-stroke lubricants, and the fact they're not going to be thrashed by spotty-faced teenagers, means they should prove pretty reliable transport. The Excelsior Talisman Excelsior was one of the very oldest British motorcycle production companies. They built a reputation for developing exciting and innovative four-stroke single racing machines back in the 1920s and 30s. But it also developed ranges of two-stroke engines for itself too, although none perhaps are more famous than the collapsible parascooter of World War II. This would later be built by Brockhouse Engineering as the Corgi, who would also be marketed in the United States as the Indian Papoose. Now while their post-war range did make use of course of Villiers engines, they also developed some two-strokes of their own, including their 150cc universal motor. But more exciting things were to come when in 1950 they announced their parallel twin two-stroke 250 Talisman motor. Essentially the engine is assembled in two halves and then the two crankcase halves are joined together by a woodruff key in the middle. A simple, elegant and on the whole pretty sturdy solution. The first 1950 model was the Touring model. This had a single carburetor but was joined later by a twin carburetor sporty model and by 1950 standards the little Excelsior was pretty rapid for a 250. By the 1960s of course it was lagging far behind having fairly minimal development in that time, except of course for an enlargement of 328ccs, that was very little help to a learner rider of course. And by the 1960s the 250 was seen very much as the base model of the twin cylinder range, being fitted with just a single carburetor and with a peak performance of only around 60 miles an hour. One interesting and I suppose very modern feature about the bike was the fact that it used a 180 degree crank spacing rather than the 360 you find on most other British parallel twins. This gives it a sound much more akin to a Japanese two-stroke of the period. The Excelsiors were well engineered, but the company was small and supplied many of the machines in kit form to avoid taxation. But when this rule was changed, it gravely affected their sales, as did the collapse of the Berkeley company to whom they supplied engines. And by the mid-60s, Excelsior had ceased motorcycle production. Cotton 
conquest. Cotton Light Greaves is a company best known for the production of off-road machines, whether they be trials or scrambles. And like Greaves, they also made extensive use of Villiers engines. They were also based in Gloucester, again further south than most of the production companies at that time. The company had been founded by one Frank Willoughby Cotton in 1918 and would remain a production company for motorcycles for many years, outliving most of their much larger contemporaries. In the mid-60s, Villiers announced the Starmaker engine. This single-cylinder two-stroke was by far the most advanced Villiers engine yet produced. And Cotton would make use of this high-performance engine in their road racing Telstar bike and also their Cotton Cougar motocross machine. But they would fit it into a road bike too, and this would be the Cotton Conquest of 1965. The Star Maker had been developed by Bernard Hooper. He would later go on to design the isoelastic mounts for the Norton Commando. And while it was still a fairly conventional piston ported air cooled single cylinder two stroke, it was considerably more advanced than its predecessors. And as the name suggests, it was developed very much with competition in mind. So even in its initial form, the bike made around 25 horsepower around 100 horsepower per litre, a considerable amount by mid-60s standards. And this would of course mean that the Conquest was one of the fastest British 250s ever made. But unfortunately Cotton was a relatively small company, so it simply couldn't produce enough machines to really take the market by storm. And then in the late 60s, Norton Villiers, as they were now called, withdrew the use of the engine for use by other companies, keeping the engine almost exclusively for use by their off-road AGS range. And these machines would go on to be very successful in motocross in Europe and Great Britain. But Cotton would continue. They produced the Cavalier Trials bike, which used a Minarelli engine in the 1970s, as well as an effective road racing machine with a Rotax engine. But despite this, the factory would close for good in 1980. Well, I do hope you enjoyed our collection of classic 1960s British 250s. Are there any more collections you'd like to see us do videos on, or if you've got a machine that we can test ride, let us know below. I do hope you enjoyed that video, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, thank you very much for watching.